Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Um, thank you so much for joining. A few minutes late. I do uh, apologize for that. This was very last minute. <laughs> I thought about it this morning. I talked to Garrett. I'm like, what are we doing today? He's like, not much. So I decided to celebrate my 5,000 subscribers uh, by doing some reading sprints and uh, a QA. and a I don't have anybody here with me um, today, mainly because A, it was last minute, and I know it's kind of early for some of my friends. And um, for two, I just thought, you know, this way I could kind of do a Q&A as well. So if you guys have any questions, book related, non-book related, whatever the case may be, please do let me know. So what I was thinking was um, uh, maybe do like chat for like a half an hour or so and then um we can do a half an hour sprint <laughs> and if there are questions you know please like i said ask if you are here and you want to come on live let me know and i can send you the link um yeah so anyway that's it uh i should share with you guys what i'm reading because i finished i finished the catch yesterday by amy lee and i am going to do a review tonight when i film my daily reading update, because I didn't do a reading update on Thursday or Friday, um, mainly because I'd still been reading the same books and it had been kind of busy. Um, but I'm going to do an update tonight uh, and share that so you guys will see that tomorrow. So I am reading, excuse me for reaching, um, uh, today, as I talk off camera, today my goal is to finish, that's not it, <sighs> um, The Summoning Up Love by Cynthia Williams. I am 60-ish percent of the way through it. I should be able to finish it today. That's my goal. So yesterday I was working on trying to finish uh, the uh, uh, Amy Lee book. And then I did start this morning on audio. I got one chapter in to the talk of uh, Coyote Canyon by Brendan Novak. Sorry for the glare. This is from the library. But I am listening to it on audio. So I hope to... I'm in no rush to get these done. The audiobooks are just something to kind of listen to um, as I'm going along. So let's jump into the comments. Let me share with me what you all are reading as well. Emily says, congratulations. Thank you, Emily. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Cajun. Um, I just, I can't believe it. I just, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Amy. Uh, she says, hi, everyone. I'm currently reading Archangel's Storm by Nalini Singh today. Excellent. Thank you, Ambie, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, Britta, congrats on five, 5K. Thank you, Britta. I appreciate that. Um, Melodic, congrats on 5K. As someone who's been watching for a very long time, I think it's long overdue. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. But, you know, each of us in due time, right? Each of us in due time. Uh, Sue, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Jenny, congrats. Dorothy, thank you, Dorothy. And Esther says she's reading um, Shocked Apart, book nine in the main clam bake series by Barbara Ross. So that is for Marked Mystery Madness, where the theme is to the nines. Um, so yeah, so that is exciting. Yay. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Sorry, let me just turn this off. So yeah, so here, now I can kind of show you guys the cover. So I'm reading it as part of the bind up. And I think I'm actually going to try and read all three of them, but we shall see. But I'm starting with this one. And it is a little spooky. If you guys are into ghosts and stuff like that, it's kind of a really fun, fun read. Um, Denise, congrats. Thank you so much. Melodix is currently reading Wild for You by Jennifer Ryan. Yay, cowboys. Yes, and I have something to show you. Speaking of cowboys, hold on. So, um... Where is it? Always at the bottom of the bag. Okay, so the hubby and I went to uh, Value Village or the thrift store today. I only found five or I only found two books that I wanted to pick up. Um, and both of these are brand new, like never been read. So we have At the Crossroads by BJ Daniels, um, which is part of the Buckhorn Montana series. Speaking of cowboys. And also, let me put that one up there. No idea why, why this cover jumped out at me. No clue at all. We have Cowboy Wild by Maisie Yates. So this is in these new paperback, like these mass market max. Speaking of, so, okay, I'm going to go off on a side note here. Um, so I was at Walmart yesterday, or no, Thursday after work, because yesterday everything was closed. 
and I went and looked at the books. Now, I finally saw what a lot of you have been telling me about the new sizes of the Harlequin books. So they are about this size. So they're a little bit bigger. What they felt like to me, because they're thinner, right? Because they're only like 200 pages. Is you guys remember the Archie Double Digest books? That's what they felt like in terms of the size of the book. That's the easiest way I could explain it. It was an Archie Double Digest. Um, one of those. That's how big it's like how the book itself felt. And I have been complaining the other day on my channel how um, they were not acknowledging the 75th anniversary of Harlequin. But if you take that ebook or that print book and you turn it over on the back, it has a little the little diamond, the little Harlequin diamond in like a ruby. And it says 75th anniversary. Great. Why is it not on the front of the book? Why is it hidden on the back? So if you buy the ebook, you are never going to see that. It's like, here, we'll throw you a bone, but we're not going to throw you a bone in your face. Like, I, I don't, why they're not acknowledging it. If you guys, if you guys have been reading Harlequins for years, 15 years ago, it was the 60th anniversary. And my gosh, you guys, it was an entire year event. Every month they spotlighted a different series. They had these like, you know, things on the cover that said 60th anniversary spotlight, you know? It was amazing. Like they ran with it the whole year and 75 is getting a little sticker on the back i'm just disappointed i'm disappointed i'm sorry so i'm trying not to spend the entire <laughs> video here ranting but you know it may happen <laughs> um cajun said finished a book right before this i'm gonna start murder if you cheese the german bakery number four during the sprint i guess that sounds like fun uh steve hello steve congrats on 5k that's five thousand more chances to convert people to romance reading yes that is what i am here for read all the romance books. Uh, Moira, well-deserved congratulations. Hi, everyone. She says, thank you, Moira. Ellie, congratulations. Thank you. Emily says, I'm reading Burial of Ghosts by Anne Cleves. Excellent. Um, a lot of uh, uh, spooky March mystery stuff. We're trying to get the last few in before the end of March Mystery Madness, right, everybody? Um, Sue says, I'm trying to finish up Immersed in West Africa by Terry Lister. It's like a travel book. Excellent. Oh, and I did get another book the other day. I bought a book from Amazon for Amish in April. And it's actually a nonfiction book, Amish book. And I'm super excited. One of you lovelies told me about it. So I am so super excited. Um, Emily says, congrats. Thank you. Uh, I'm reading a fake inked in blood. I have less than 100 pages to go. Fantastic. Um, Amy says, I'm listening to A Stitch in Crime by Betty Henchman, number four in A Crochet Mystery. Excellent. Uh, Ellie, I'm reading The Accomplice by Steve Cavanaugh. Uh, I'm reading Hot Summer Nights by Janice Maynard. My first time reading this author. Oh, I do hope that you enjoy it. Um, Nina says, congratulations. Thank you. Um, and Denise says, also reading Irish Johansson's The Persuasion. Excellent. And just one page away says, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kim, hi. So happy for you and all your subscribers. I'm reading Murder at Sunset Rock. An Intrigue by Deborah Webb. Is that the new one? I think that's the new one, right? <laughs> Murder at Sunset Rock. No, it's an older one. Came out in 2023. Oh, I like the cover on it. That's cool. Um, yeah, so thank you for sharing that. So do you guys want to see the Amish book that I got? I'm very excited about the Amish book. Bear with. Sorry. See, okay. So the reason I bought it as a physical book is because when I went on Amazon, the ebook was $12.99. The print book was $14. A dollar more for the print book all day long. Yes, please. So for my Amish read, I'm going to be reading Abandoned Prayers by Greg Olson, um, which is an incredible true story of murder, obsession, and Amish secrets. Because I can't read a nice Amish story. I need to read about murder, Amish murders. <laughs> I mean, come on. I absolutely love the Linda Castillo series, the, uh, the Kate Burkholder. I mean, this is like Kate Burkholder. And someone who told me about this said it was like it was this book or he did another. Amish. I think it's the other Amish book he does. Um, but it actually has an introduction by Linda Castillo. So I'm very excited to get to this one. Now, I also have it on audio, but um, I read by him, If You Tell. I did read If You Tell. 
and I really liked it. His books are a little chunky, but this one says sounds really good. Let me read the back of it for you. On Christmas Eve 1985, a hunter found a young boy's body along the icy cornfields in Nebraska. The residents of Chester, Nebraska buried him as the little boy Blue. Unclaimed and unidentified until a phone call from Ohio two years later led authorities to Eli Stoltzman, the boy's father. Stoltzman, the son of an Amish bishop, was by all appearances a dedicated farmer and family man in the country's strictest religious sect. But behind his quiet facade was a man involved with pornography, sadomachism, I cannot say that word, S&M, um, and drugs. After the suspicious death of his pregnant wife, he took his preschool-age son, Danny, and hit the road on a sexual odyssey, ending with his conviction for murder. But the mystery of Eli Stoltzman and the fate of his son didn't end on the barren Nebraskan plains. The story was just beginning. Like, that sounds so, like, wow. I cannot wait to read this one. Like, I want to start it now, but I have to get through my other non-Harlequin books first. And then that's going to go on my next list of, you know, my next five pick books. Um to where it was um kim hi sarah so happy for all you oh you just read that one thank you no the one before that gotcha uh yes whoops um karen says i'm reading kate morton homecoming congratulations on 5000 thank you um i'm gonna start the writing retreat and cross stitch while listening excellent i started a sweater so i'm probably gonna be doing some listening uh during one of the sprints um just one page away says, I'm still reading a plus one for murder. I took about a week off from reading. Life has been busy. Looking forward to catching up this weekend. That is excellent. You know what? Taking a break from reading is always a great thing to do. You know, it kind of recharges the batteries. Or taking a break from anything that you really, you know, like sometimes if you're struggling, it, it, it might rekindle your love for something. You know what I mean? Except for your spouse. Don't take a break from your spouse or your job. <laughs> they might fire you. <laughs> Unless you take a legit vacation. Abandoned Prayers, what a terrific book and what a great choice. Oh, thank you, Steve, for the rec uh, for that. Okay, good. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Yes, the Amish do have many secrets. I'm sure they do. Amish Prayers is available on Kindle Unlimited. Will you, we'll be reading along with you. Excellent. See, but here in Canada, you have to pay for it at $12.99. It's not available on KU, unfortunately. Um, Mona says, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And Liz, thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, here, hold on. Uh, Cajun question. Um, when did you start your channel? Um, when you started your channel, was the focus on books or knitting, cross stitch or a blend? Okay. So some of you know this, some of you do not have been with me since the beginning. I actually had a channel before this one that I ran for four or five years. Um, I was the Canadian knitter on YouTube. The channel is now gone. I've actually deleted it. Um, I don't remember to be completely honest when I started that channel. I think it was the year that Garrett and I moved into the apartment. We were there for like six years. We've been here for four. So that's 10. I think it was probably 10 plus years ago. Um, and I had found down, I fallen down the YouTube rabbit hole of watching like bookish content, but way back then, for those of you who remember, most of the content, the book content was YA, was the big YA people. You know who I'm talking about. I don't have to name them. We're all familiar with who got booktube off the ground, those YA people, readers. And I just like, okay, well, there's clearly no place for me here. And then I ended up finding, um, it was in that same time period, I started knitting. Because I've never been a, well, I was a cross-stitcher first, like from the time I was a kid. But I never really did it very seriously. Um, because they didn't have the cute patterns that they have now. Let's be realistic. And I took up knitting before I got married. So almost 15 years ago now. And I think, no, because I was doing, was I doing the knitting channel before that? I honestly can't remember. Um, I know I started this channel when we were still at the apartment because it was eight years ago. But anyway, so I had the book, uh, the bookish knitter. I had the Canadian knitter podcast and it was called a podcast. It wasn't like booktube where you put out various videos throughout the week. You do different things with the knitting. Uh, if you watch floss too, if you watch uh, knitting podcasts here on YouTube, they're, they're kind of like a weekly or bi-weekly or even once a month thing where 
it's like an hour plus long video where the person goes through like what they've been crafting over the course of that week, anything that they've purchased over the course of that week, stuff that they want to start. You know, it's kind of like all of the booktube. It's like, it's as if somebody would take a booktube video and just amalgamate it all into one and say, okay, so I'm going to do a weekly video for booktube. And this actually was kind of my original idea that I was going to do when I started booktube was to do like a weekly video of like, okay, so here's what I've read this week. Here's what I want to read this week. So like a wrap up, here's what I've purchased. Here's, and you know, blah, blah, blah. But my focus when I started, because what I noticed is doing the knitting podcast is that I really started to swing more back to my first, first original love, which has always been reading. I have always loved reading. Um, I don't remember not having a book in my hand. So that's why I kind of stopped doing the knitting thing because there was many, many reasons why I stopped the knitting podcast. A lot of it, it, it we noticed here in booktube as well as the consumerism. Um, you'd get a lot of, um, the thing is with knitting podcasts, and I'm not knocking anybody for this. It's the same in the beauty community and stuff like that. But it's like the bigger numbers you have, the more stuff that you got sent. And it just felt, it started to feel like show offy by some of the big knitting podcasts. Like, oh, look, I got this, or I got this free yarn, and I got this, and I got this. It was literally an entire episode of you just showing the free stuff that you got. And it starts to disillusion people. You know what I mean? Not because I wanted that as well, but because it was taking away from the content I actually wanted to see. I wanted to see what they were making. I wanted to see what they were knitting, you know, or crocheting or cross stitching or whatever the case may be. And I just thought this is community. I don't think is no longer really for me, but I have to say though, I met some very, very good friends through that. Um, people that I've actually met in person. Um, and they're delightful and I'm still friends with them. Not as close as we used to be, but we traveled together to the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. You know, I mean, it's been pretty amazing. Like it was a really good experience for me. So now I'm doing the bookish stuff. And um, I much, I think this is much more up my alley because I'm always reading. I might not always be crafting, but I'm always reading. But I knew as the years went on, like your channel changes, you change, you grow and really adding like the crafting stuff in here. I know YouTube wants you to stay in your lane. Like if this is what you do, you should stick to doing it because that's what's going to get you the hits. And that's probably why it's taking me this long to hit 5,000 because I've kind of always been a little low over the place, but that's okay. You know, I never had a viral video and I'm not knocking anyone who has. I think it's fantastic. Like I, I know Steve probably gained most of his if he's still here because of, uh, and, and that's how I found Steve was because of, um, some comments that were made <laughs> quite a number of years ago. Sorry if I'm bringing up anything bad for you there, Steve. Or somebody like Ollie, who had one video go absolutely viral. And he is totally, I think he's over 30,000 now and totally well-deserved. But you know what I mean? Like, I didn't ever have that. I didn't ever do anything that was viral. I'm just doing what makes me happy. And that's really all that matters, right? So anyway, long winded answer to your question there, Cajun, but what else did you expect from me? Um, <laughs> I'm liking BJ Daniels as well. Yes, she is fantastic. Um, she is an author I'd love to interview. So maybe I'll have to, to look into that. Lee, hi, Lee. She says, um, hi, uh, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Congrats on the 5k. Thank you so much. Uh, Ambie says, the once a week video thing is only in knitting and crocheting. It's more like booktube. I've always wondered why it's different in other communities. No idea. No idea. Uh, Stephanie, congratulations on accomplishing so much by being authentic and awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love your channel the way it is. Thank you. I think we have a nice community. I think if it got too much or too big, I just think it would be, it's it's not the same. Do you know what I mean? Like, and again, and I'm not knocking it. I'm, I'm not saying that if I had that many subscribers, it wouldn't be very cool, but I wouldn't want to lose the authenticity and I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't change anything strictly for the numbers. Let's put it that way. This is truly my hobby. And, you know, you guys know I've taken breaks. I haven't, I, I don't upload on a schedule anymore. I kind of do it when I want to. And that's life because life is life, right? If anyone else has any other questions, please, please do feel free. Emily, I've been with you since your first few videos. I just loved and watched everything ever since. Oh, thank you so much, Emily. So you've been with me through short hair, very long hair, and back to short hair. <laughs> For my 15th anniversary on BookTube, I'll have long hair again. <laughs> I went back and I was looking at some of my first videos and I thought, oh my goodness. Like, I just, 
I mean, I'd been on YouTube before. It wasn't like this is my first rodeo, but it was just so weird. You know, I'm just so curious now. I, I, um, uh, on, uh, who is texting me? Oh, Garrett. Um, he's complaining about something, I think. Um, I'm just curious because I think my Instagram from way back in the day is still up. Uh, bear with me. I, there I am. There's my old, uh, Instagram, the Canadian knitter, if anyone ever wants to. Oh, pictures of Gorin. Okay, we're going back to 2018. A lot of my knitting stuff. If you guys ever want to see that knitting stuff, uh, feel free to pop on over to the Canadian knitter. All one word on Instagram. Um, I just want to see here if I can find anything that will give me even a clue as to when I started that because I am super, super curious. Oh, there's my niece's little baby. Um, oh, wait, hold on. What's this? Episode 70 was in 2016. Episode 70 of the Canadian Nerd Podcast was in 2016. So, and I think I brought out weekly episodes. So it might've been 2015, 2014. I started it. Sorry, guys. I know this is totally boring for you, I'm sure, but I'm just kind of looking for something in particular this uh episode 50 was in 2015 <laughs> a part of me wishes that i kept it up just for the sole fact that it would be great to have that um to have that memory still back up there what's this one episode 33 was from 2015 uh i don't think i've ever posted what episode number one was 29. It's got to be 2014. It's got to be a decade ago then, right? It's got to be a decade ago. Um, 2015. It has to, ooh, I forgot about that sweater. I think I need to re-knit that. <laughs> Seriously, guys, find this Instagram. If you want to see pictures of uh, Gorin and Logan and, you know, all of them, um, Episode 14, 2015. Yeah, it was. Oh, my God. Okay. Can we just for a second? My hair. Oh, you guys are not going to be able to see it. Look how blonde it was. Ooh. What do you guys think? Should I dye it back that, like, platinum -y blonde color? I really like that platinum -y blonde color. I think that's what I'll do. Anyway, sorry. Episode 7, 2014. So it was in 2014. So it's been a decade, decade since then. Sorry, guys. <laughs> He's walked down memory lane with me. Um, Cajun says, I get what you're saying. Some of the bigger channels, for lack of a better word, seem to lose the personal touch and connection. Ambie says, I know exactly what you mean. There are some lives I've been on where there are so many people my comments aren't even seen. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Cajun, oh, your niece is a baby. At first I thought you said your niece is baby. I was like, what? Not that long ago. <laughs> Denise, I am reading another Harlequin book besides Brenda Jackson because of you. Oh, yay. Oh, Brenda Jackson's also fantastic. And I remember that hair. Yes, it was this short, but it was like bleach platinum blonde. Maybe I'll go to Walmart later. You know what I should do? I'm going to see my aunt this afternoon. Maybe I'll stop at Walmart and buy hair color and I'll get her to dye it. I miss the blonde. I miss the light blonde. Not the bleach blonde. I don't want to bleach it out and destroy it again, but to go really, really light would be really fun again. Oh, I miss that so much. I noticed, though, as I was slipping through all those pictures that just before that, I had the bright red hair. Who remembers the bright, bright red hair? The, like, Little Mermaid fire engine red hair. Um, so I think in order to get rid of that, I had to bleach it out. I think that's why it was so blonde. But I'm, I think that's what I might do. Oh, that'll be fun. Um... Here's a good question. Um, question, are you a pro process or a product knitter? So for those of you who um, do not know what that means, it, it, it goes for all crafting. I don't think it's just for knitting. It would work for crochet. So do you work on the project because you want the finished item or because you enjoy working on the item? And in my case, I am definitely much more of a progress knitter or crafter. I just love the idea of knitting. Um, you know, that's why I'm always knitting socks because they're super easy to knit. You just kind of go around and around and around. Um, you know what I mean? Um, and it's just, it's fun, right? Um, but 
for example, the sweater I've started, it, um, it's a very, very oversized sweater. So I had to cast on for my size, like 264 stitches, which is ludicrous um, because you start from the bottom and you're knitting up. Um, so you're starting at the bottom of the sweater. So of course it's the biggest part, right? So like that is right now, that is <laughs> my cast on. But again, I love the process of knitting. I just think it's so much fun. So while I do want the finished product, I enjoy the making of it. My friend Rainy, now I might be speaking out of turn, um, but she um, she tends to be more of a project knitter or, cro or cross stitcher or whatever the case may be. She enjoys the process, but she definitely wants that finished product. Um, Cajun says, just to be nosy, what is your natural hair color? <laughs> Experts have asked. <laughs> no, actually, guys, to be completely honest, up until I dyed it, what, about a, two months ago? When did I dye it last? When I went really dark and now it's faded out to this. Before that, like all from the last few years, I haven't dyed my, I hadn't dyed my hair since before the pandemic. So all my hair from 2020, 2021, 22, 23, that was all my natural hair color. Um, yeah, and I hadn't dyed it in a long time. So there's your answer. Um, I know you did. Yep. Um, I hate to see how big my, aw. <laughs> I know it's like, I was like, holy cow. <laughs> They're like, and the problem was I had to cast it on like four times because I kept messing up. Because you're supposed to join it, as they say, join it in the round. So you're still just knitting in a circle, right? Problem is, is that you can't twist the stitches. So like you can't twist it. It's hard to explain, but I did that. So it was a pain. So I've had to do it a couple times, but I'm just super, super glad that uh, that I got it now. Anyway, we're at 1230. We're going to jump into a 30 minute sprint, everybody. I'm not going to put a um, an anything on here, like any kind of background or anything like that. Um, and just let you guys enjoy yourselves and enjoy the reading. Um, but yeah, sorry, I'm just yammering around. But if you have any questions and you think about them during the sprint, post them and I will get to them. And uh, yeah, so happy reading, everybody. We will read to the top of the hour. Let me find that. There we go. Talk to y'all soon.
So how did everybody do on their reading? Um, I ate my lunch, turkey sandwich, a couple chips, and I got two chapters listened to of the uh, the Talk of Coyote Canyon by Brenda Novak. I'm enjoying it. I'm not particularly loving it. It's not blowing me away at this point, but um, we shall reserve judgment for uh, after we've read a bit more. So let's jump back into the comments. Put my hair thing in because... It's a little, sh okay, so when I got my hair cut, it's a little bit shorter than I originally had wanted it to be. So I'm trying to grow it just a little bit that I'm gonna kind of get it reshaped, like recut, reshaped, if you will. So I'm letting it grow a little bit. So sometimes I get these like long pieces that it's just the way it was cut and I'm not, anyway, it's a thing. Uh, I bought some headbands when we went to uh, the store today. So um, I think the blonde hair suits you. Thank you, Lee. Yes, I think I was just saying to Garrett, um, that after we're done here, I'm going to give my aunt a call because I was going to go over and see her anyway. But uh, I'm going to stop at Walmart and maybe get some hair color and see if she'll do it for me because it won't take very long at all. I mean, I've got no hair, but it's always easier to have somebody else help you. And we don't miss any spots. Um, and he says, I did the fire engine hair red as well. I think it was in 2015. Yeah, it's hard to maintain that bright, bright little mermaid fire engine red. Very hard to maintain um to shannon thank you uh congrats reading dawn of the dead by casey daniels excuse me i've got the hiccups awesome oh amby's asking a couple questions um if colors had taste what would each color taste like weird well grape is grape right grape purple is grape orange is orange right um red is always an apple to me i'd say yellow would be banana green maybe a lime that's a hard one. Pink bubblegum. Oh, I guess it's the first thing you think of that is actually that color, right? Um, what scrabbles your brain every time you think about it? How, because I am terrified, terrified of the ocean, but how vast it actually is. And space as well. Like this part of my brain cannot comprehend the fact that there's nothing outside of it. Like, <clears throat> you know, we're in like, I'm not trying to get all, you know, sciencey because I'm clearly not sciencey, but we are like in the world, in the earth. And then beyond that is just nothing. And I think my brain has a hard time remember, like thinking about the fact that there's nothing. It's not like it's another big circle of like the galaxy. And we're just, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but just how vast. And I think for a, 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 a more, that's what I'm looking for, a more earthly representation would be the ocean. Like there are so many bits of it that haven't even been explored. It's just, it boggles my mind and it's creepy as heck. I ran across this video that was for the depths of the ocean. And it was like this like AI, I don't wanna say AI, but like computer generated video. I'll try and find it and I'll share it with you guys. But it's like landmarks and stuff. Like if, you know, like the Mediterranean Sea is Harvard, or, you know, like how big would the sand, not the sand tower, like the Eiffel Tower be to fit in certain, they show you exactly how deep down the Titanic actually sank. It's, 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 and the music over it is super creepy, but it's really, really interesting. Um, uh, who are you, who to you are the king and queen of country music? Um, that's a hard question because... I think the reigning king, in my opinion, just because I love him so much, will always be Kenny Chesney. Always, always. He's been around forever. He was one of the first people I started listening to when I started listening to country. He is still my goal to go see in concert. Um, I, I, he's at Darien Lake this summer, but he usually comes to Darien Lake every summer, which is just over the border from where, get, where we live. So maybe next summer, because this year I've got tickets to see Hardy, which I cannot wait. Um, but like, you know, for newer country, much newer country, I'd have to say people like Morgan Wallen, Hardy. Now, in terms of female, to be completely honest, there are not a ton of female country artists out right now. Don't get me started on Beyonce. That is not a country album. Sorry. Um, and it's not because of anything. It's because legitimately I've listened to the album. It's not a country album. <laughs> Um, same as to be fair, I just said, I adore Hardy. He is not fully country either. Like some of his stuff is country, but like clearly rock star, his newest song is a rock track. He performs it with Nickelback. Like, you know, um, 
but like I said, in terms of female country artists, I'm trying to think if there's anybody major that I can think of on the radio right now of songs that I'm really enjoying. Um, Taylor Swift, she, you know, she's got her start in country and I, I still really, really like, I even like her new stuff. Don't get me wrong, but clearly she embraced the pop side, which is great. Good for her. And clearly it seems to be working for her. Um, I'm legitimately trying to think of who was on the top, like the Spotify country list. Hold on, bear with, because <laughs> I listen to, oh, that's pretty much all I do at work as I listen to Spotify. Um, there are so many songs that I love. So here's who's on the, see, again, freaking Beyonce. No, because she brought out Jolene. Um, sorry, Mitchell Tenpenny is really good. What is this Dasha? Am I missing something? This song Austin? When I first saw it, I thought, oh, did she redo Blake Shelton's Austin? No, 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 no. Um, let me see here. Oh, Luke Combs. Luke Combs is fa fabulous. Um, this has suddenly become a music podcast <laughs> or a music e episode. Um, uh, Nate Brown's really good. He's a Bradley Zimmerman. He's new. He's coming up in the, in the game. Um, there's my Kenny. Um, do, 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 do. Jason Aldean. I've seen him in concert. He's quite good. Um, Casey Musgraves. I'm not a fan. I, I'm really, really not a fan. Chris Young. I've seen him in concert. He's fantastic. Um, Ellen Langley isn't bad. Her Country Boys Dreams, uh, Country Boys Dream Girl song is really good. And there's the other one called, um, oh my gosh, um, Damn You, I think is the name of the song. Hold on. By Ellen, by Ellen Langley as well. Yeah, Damn You is a really good song too. So anyway, there's, a, there's my thoughts on country music right now. <laughs> um... Julie says, hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, congrats. I'm reading Murder Served Meat by Michelle Hillen Klump. Excellent. Um, Emily, who are your favorite Harlequin writers? Oh, my gosh. Tara Taylor. Okay, so my pretty much my auto buys is probably what you're asking. Uh, it would be Tara Taylor Quinn, BJ Daniels, um, Pippa Roscoe, uh, Rachel Stewart. Um uh anna j stewart is fantastic as well um oh gosh i'm just trying to think right now off the top of my head marie farinella she always writes a good book i mean the last one i read by her wasn't fantastic but i still did enjoy it um uh basically anybody any of the oh some of the older authors like donna alward who i don't think she writes for harlequin anymore but she used to back in the day she was really good. She wrote a lot of great cowboy romances. So I'm just thinking in in my head. I'm just I, I could I could sit here for hours and just list you guys authors that I absolutely love. But those are just some of them. Um, thank you, Lisa. Uh, Magical Emma Rose says hello, Sarah. Congrats! You always are the person I think of when I watch the Golden Girls. I rewatched an, at least an episode every evening. Would love to see your collection of Golden Girl stuff. I actually don't have a very big collection of Golden Girl stuff. I have a book. I have three of the Puffunkel Pops. I think I'm missing Blanche or Rose. I'm missing one of them. And I also have the Little People set that was brought out. I paid a decent penny for that, but I had to have it. That's really all I have in, in terms of collectibles. I know in terms of collectibles, I think Tiffany over a Beach Bum Bookworm might have a bit more than me. Um, Lisa says, not currently reading anything, but I finished A Very Lively Murder this morning, the second book in the Three Dahlia series by Katie Watson who also writes as Sophie Pembroke for Mills and Boone Harlequin. <gasps> Sophie Pembroke. Okay, there's another author that I absolutely love. Read her book. Oh my gosh, Sophie Pembroke's book. What is it called? It's one of my absolute favorites. Um, fantastic fiction. Sophie Pembroke. And I did not know that that was the same author, so thank you so much for sharing that. Um, the Love Trilogy, where it's a standalone book. I, it's one of my favorite covers as well. There it is. Road Trip with the Best Man. It is absolutely delightful. Absolutely delightful. Um, oh, and I know that you used to interview a lot of authors on your podcast. Anyone you would have loved to have chatted with? Um, Heather Graham. Heather Graham, I can say, I think I've said this before. She was one of the first people we reached out to and, one of the, and the only one we never heard back from. I'm still a little <laughs> upset about that. <laughs> but I mean, we were brand, brand new. 
But we interviewed Jill freaking Shalvis. We interviewed oh, Maisie Yates. We interviewed Susan Wiggs. Like, oh my gosh, like these huge names. But like Heather Graham would have been the ultimate for me, um, for sure. Nothing saying I can't try it now. Sasha Summers is someone else who is fantastic. I've had the chance to, I interviewed her personally here on YouTube. And I think I've already mentioned, I will be interviewing John Donna Alward in the spring when her new book comes out, when her historical fiction debut comes out. So that'll be very exciting. Um, uh, I hope that you make the video about your thoughts on the recent Harlequin Changes editorial line. Uh, it will be coming. I'm just gathering up. <laughs> I had a little rant at the beginning of this video. <laughs> anyway. Um, what is something that might surprise us about you? I'm pretty open with you guys, to be honest. Uh, I have a fear of the ocean. I don't like spiders and I don't like clowns. So if you had a clown dressed as a spider in the ocean, that would be it for me. No, I don't like deep water at all. But in terms of stuff that I don't know, I can't think of anything. Nothing scandalous. I've never been arrested just because I haven't been caught. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, I think I've mentioned this before, but I don't think everybody's aware of it, but that's something I'm actually, I'm not proud of the fact that I used to do it, but I'm super proud of the fact that I now quit and that I am a former smoker. I used to smoke. I smoked for many, many years. Um, at, while I was doing this, I quit two years ago, February, when I had the pacemaker put in for obvious reasons, <laughs> but it was a very difficult addiction to quit. And for anyone else struggling with an addiction, I fully, fully understand, fully understand how hard it can be. It's not just, oh, just don't do it anymore. It's not that easy. <laughs> Whether it's drugs or alcohol or tobacco, tobacco is a drug, full stop. Um, you know, gambling, shopping, all these are, are mental addictions and addictions in general. Um, but yeah, I'm a former smoker and I quit, I quit cold turkey because I ended up in hospital. I had no other choice. And I was there in the hospital for three weeks, um, had the pacemaker put in. And if you, those of you who guys who followed me back then, you'll remember this, all this stuff that happened. And I was pretty sick afterward. Like I was very weak when I got home. And I think if I'd been feeling better when I came home, I would have probably honestly started smoking again. Um, but I wasn't, I could barely get up the stairs. So I have not touched a cigarette since February the 9th, 2022. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I have, believe me, as a former smoker and anyone here who is one as well, um, even as early, it was, was it Thursday? I was on my way to work and I put my coat on and I automatically put my hands on the front pockets of my winter coat and I was looking for my pack of smokes and a lighter. Like it was like just this mental, and I haven't thought about smoking in forever. It's probably why this, it made me think about it now to, when you ask the question. But yeah, so anyone struggling with addiction, I've been there. And you know what? The greatest decision I ever made was to make sure I not did not pick up those smokes again because with the current health issues I'm dealing with, it wouldn't even be on the table. I would be, that would be it for me. If I still smoke, that would just be it. Um, yeah. Uh, Kim says, speaking of your favorite Harlequin writer, do you know, uh, do you know, does Harlequin ever do a conference like some of the other groups uh, where you get a chance to meet some of the writers, get books signed? No, they do not. Not to my understanding. No, unfortunately, that would be very cool. But no. Cajun says, what came first, the habit of uh, the habit or the love of reading? Also, what uh, also do you think it came from your? Oh, yeah, 100 percent. I came from a family of readers. 100%. My mom's a reader. My dad was a reader. You know, I think I made this joke last week uh, that I was at the library and I ran into my brother and my nephew. You know, you come from a family of readers when you're running into your siblings at the local library. <laughs> and it was definitely the love of reading. I mean, once I realized how much I enjoyed it, I'm pretty sure I had a book with me everywhere I went. I lived for the Scholastic Book Fair. I loved going to the library, either the big one that we had, like the in-town library or even the school library. I was very, super excited to start high school to check out the high school library, you know? So and yeah, definitely the love of reading, then the habit soon followed. Anita got to 20%. Um, Amy got to 65. Cajun got to 16. Um, Moira says, I got a couple chapters read in the case of the blues by Karina Moss. Love that series. Excellent. Um, Sue says, I read about 30 pages. 
but lots of photos of beautiful waterfalls. Ooh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, Alice, happy 5K. That's fantastic. Thank you, Alice. Uh, Emily ate lunch. Now I'm working on getting dinner um, in the crock pot. Cajun chicken Alfredo pasta. That sounds delicious. Um, have to run off now. I've got to do some errands today. Thank you for the sprints. Thank you so much for joining. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, I guess you went in a different direction. I was thinking King and Queen. I think of a uh, big, uh, big, big and OG. I was thinking either Reba or Dolly. Or... See, I don't listen to old country. I, I never really did listen to old country. I would only really go with new country because I didn't start listening to country until the Kenny Chesney era, right? I never listened to Dolly. Um, I barely, I did listen to a bit of Alan Jackson. Toby Keith was amazing. He was someone that when he passed a few months ago, I legitimately was upset about it. Um, he was one of my first country concerts. He was so good. I know he was controversial and political, but he was so amazing. And I have seen Reba in concert and I'm like, I'm familiar with who Reba is like from her TV show, but I wouldn't really know her back catalog of music to be fair. Um, Garth, not really a fan. Friends in Those Places about the only um, uh, song. Thank you very much. Um, whoops. Uh, me too. Congrats on quitting smoking. Excellent. Um, Scholastic Book Fair was the best. And yes, Toby Keith was amazing. So you want to know how long ago I saw Toby Keith? It was the year that him and the Dixie Chicks were in that like political like discussion thing. And I saw him perform at the Molson Amphitheater here in Toronto. Um, his opening act was Blake Shelton. Blake Shelton was brand new and his song Austin or the Baby had just come out. Blake had hair like down to like the middle of his, like in a ponytail. Like Blake had super long hair back then. So that's how long ago I saw um, Toby Keith in concert. I've seen, I've seen Keith Urban like three times. I've seen Gary Allen twice. He was really good. I've seen Brad Paisley. Brad Paisley was fantastic. I saw Sugar Land. Um, I saw Gretchen Wilson. Wasn't super impressed. I saw Big and Rich. I've seen Brooks and Dunn. Brooks and Dunn are quite good. Um, I went with my parents to see them. My dad really, really liked them. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. I've seen a lot of concerts. Like I, seen, I said, I saw Jason Aldean, and it was Chris Young and Kane Brown who opened for him. Um, and I'm seeing Hardy this summer, and I cannot wait. Um it's going to be, I think it's, I think the Hardy concert is going to be super interesting because he does do a mix of country and rock. And I just think it's going to be interesting to see like the people who like listen to his rock don't necessarily know that he does the country. <laughs> They're going to be like, wait, what is this? <laughs> Brad Paisley is really good. So, okay. I'm here. I can tell you guys stories. So growing up, my parents used to go to the casino and um, every time that they would go, I guess that they would use these cards and they would get points and then they would get concerts at these casinos like north of us, right? That had like a big concert venue. So they used to get free concerts all the time. So Brad Paisley was coming through and I'm like, oh, I really wanted to go. But one of them had to kind of like they had to get the tickets and, and come to the concert too. My father had no idea who Brad Paisley was, right? And he's like, okay, I'll take you, right? So he go, we got the tickets and we had really good seats. I think we were third or fourth row. It's not a very big venue, these, these like casino concert hall kind of things. And my father raved the whole time about what an amazing guitar player Brad Paisley was. And I'm like, yes, he is out of, I, I think he plays in a, uh, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, uh, I'm missing out. No, I, you know what? I'm really not, I know it sounds, I'm just, I'm more the pop Oh, because you forget, I grew up in the 90s. So I grew up with bands like Nickelback and um, a lot of that alt rock type thing. And a lot of country country music today sounds like alt rock. That's why I like it so much. I have tried and it's not saying that I haven't listened to it. I've listened to Dolly. I've listened to Kenny. Um, uh, Dolly Parton and Kenny the Gambler. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. Um, I, I just, they're not for me. They're just not any, uh, The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia by Reba is Fantastic. Fancy is one of my favorite songs. Uh, it is hands down because it's lyrically an amazing song. Friends in Low Places, The Thunder Rolls, 
there's the iconic ones that I know, um, Islands in the Stream. But in general, I would not sit and listen to, and I know Jolene, um, I would not sit and listen to a Dolly album or something like that. And yes, Brad Pays is amazing. And yes, Kenny Rogers. Thank you. The other Kenny, not my Kenny. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I was actually legitimately bummed like many, many, many moons ago when he married Re Renee Zellwanger for two and a half minutes. Like I was like, oh, there goes my chance. <laughs> Did we all ever think that about a celebrity? Like when they marry somebody, okay, who else was a Backstreet Boys fan, right? And you no, know, AJ was my favorite. Um, when he got, was it last in the fall that he announced his divorce? I I saw this online and I, I'm glad it wasn't just me. A lot of people were like, okay, legitimately people were like, oh, I have a chance again. <laughs> Might be happily married to somebody else and have a slew of kids, but you know, anyway. Um, yeah. Celebrity crushes are fun. <laughs> uh, so do any of you have any other questions? I think I'm actually going to cut it off early because I am going to see about going to my auntie's house, but I just wanted to, kind of pop on here and thank all of you really very much for listening to me and over the last eight years and listening to me yammer on about various things that are clearly not even bookish related. Um, I mean, <laughs> you know, I like look at my birthday sprints. I think we spent like two hours talking about movies. <laughs> and that's what I love. I love the fact that I'm not just we must talk about just the books and only the books. And that is all. And you guys have been on this with me for so many different types of journeys that I've had, um, you know, just in terms of my life. A lot of you have been here, you know, um, Garrett and I moving my losing my dad, my dad getting sick and then losing my dad and, you know, me being sick, um, you know, and dealing with all that now that hopefully we're going to plateau for a bit. And, uh, you know, everybody's like, you're doing so well, you're doing so well. And, and I truly believe it's like the support um, from people that I have never even met, which is amazing. Um, I love both, but my favorite, I did like NSYNC too. JC, what about you? JC was my favorite. Thank you, Pat, for the thumbs up. So fun. Um, no, I have not. Um, I was baptized Anglican and I have, even though I still have my beliefs in that and I, I'm very much straddling the line. I think I'm more spiritual than religious now, to be honest. Um, and I think that's something that that's a shift that occurred when I got sick, because I think when you get sick and you get faced with some sort of a life changing thing that happens to you, like health wise or whatever, it kind of makes you rethink a lot of things. And not that I was doubting it because I've always believed in it, but um, like the much more earth centered religions, there is something to be said that for me is very comforting in church. And I have gone back a couple of times. Um, so yeah, I, I think I'm straddling that divide where it's not necessarily that I'm, I'm following any certain religion, but I'm just definitely feeling like I'm more spiritual. So, yeah. Yes, Lance. Always love Lance. Lance was adorable. <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks for the sprints. Remember, whatever a time becomes too intense, just breathe. Fantastic statement. Fantastic. Fantastic. And be safe, everyone. See you soon. Thank you all so much. And uh, I will talk to you guys. I think Tiffany. See, Julie, we can fight for him. <laughs> I saw in sync in concert as well, by the way. That was so much fun. I was much older. But my first concert ever ever, ever. New Kids on the Block. I, every Christmas, still listen to the New Kids on the Block Christmas album. It is pure nostalgia for me. Anyway, guys, before I get off on a whole, I could talk music like forever. Um, I will talk to you guys all next time. Take care and happy reading, everybody. Bye.